We have taken objective butter. Hey guys, it's 249 and I'm going to be going over the turrets, the artillery, and the AA in Battlefield 1. To start it off here, we're going to be looking at the stationary anti-air. This thing is actually pretty powerful because of its fire rate. It only does roughly about 5 damage to a vehicle. Now, I'm not too sure about that number, but it seems like every shot does roughly around 5 damage, but it adds up because of the fire rate. Now, keep in mind, you want to focus on weak parts of the plane. That means shoot the wings. Don't shoot the dead center, shoot the wings because shooting the wings will also immobilize the plane and cause increased damage to the plane. Now, one of the coolest things I like about the AA now is you can't have a camp fest on the AA. You're gonna be completely exposed and it's in an area where there's gonna be a lot of combat. So you gotta be strategic about it if you wanna use it to actually take out the planes in the air. So now I'm testing out how well the destructive power of the shots are. It doesn't seem to do any destructive damage to buildings, but it can damage small walls or lighter walls. I'm also shooting at teammates here to see if you get that similar effect, but it just seems to go further off and explode at the highest point that it can explode. So you can't really do any team damage. I'm not too sure if this actually is different when it's in hardcore mode where you can actually do team damage. But in a scenario like this, you're obviously not going to do any damage to your own teammate vehicles. But when an enemy vehicle comes into play, you're going to start seeing it exploding up close. Now looking at it a little bit more closely here, it seems to be doing roughly around seven damage. Now does this have a damage drop off where the further the plane is it does less damage and the closer it is the more damage it does i'm not too sure about that now i also go on to use it on infantry on the ground and it does pack a punch it has even splash damage because of the explosion so being that it's in an area of high combat it's not a bad idea to use it even against infantry now, I will also mention that the bigger the plane is, it could handle a lot more shots. So it only did about three damage to it until it got a bit closer, and then you started seeing a lot more damage being done, and you can also see the wing being torn apart. This is going to really immobilize the plane. Now, moving on to the artillery, I will also mention that the AA artillery and the stationary are scattered all over the map, so you do have to find them, but they can be useful in different areas of the map. So it's not just one area that, where you have to go to to be able to use them. The really cool thing about the artillery is the fact that you can actually have a reload animation seeing him load the next shell. So you're not just sitting there clicking your shoot button hoping for the next shot to go off. You actually see what's happening. It's a nice touch by DICE. But I will also mention you're not limited to a certain angle of field of view. You can go a full 360 with this thing and shoot anybody around you. It packs a powerful punch. It is literally like shooting a tank shell at somebody. It takes two shells to kill the light armor tank. I'm not too sure about the other tanks, but the light armor tank, it will take two shots to kill it. And it really has a lot of splash damage against infantry on the ground. Take this for example, I'm running around shooting people with the shotgun and level cap shoots me with it point blank up close. The splash damage actually goes on to kill him. Testing it out a little bit further here, the destructive damage is obviously there because it's pretty much shooting a tank shell at these buildings. It is going to do that damage. One of the nicest things I like about this is that DICE has put these in areas where people are actually going to use them and see them as being vital to the role on the battlefield. In previous battlefields, we've seen stationaries being scattered in areas where people aren't really going to use them. And matter of fact, they actually didn't use them. You rarely see anybody using them. In this case, it looks like this is a pretty viable position to be used. It can do some damage into that village down there, and it can even do some damage to the other areas around him. Now, moving on to the final piece, which is actually a minigun stationary. It has unbelievably horrible spread. It barely ever goes where you aim, but it does a lot of damage. So it is viable for that cause. And most of all, it's great for holding down positions where enemies are going to be rushing up. In this case, rushing up a hill. It's great for holding that down. Now, a little trick I noticed with it is if you tap with it at a certain fire rate, you can actually reduce that spread well enough and have a good enough fire rate to still do a lot of damage to the opponent. But keep in mind, this is all closed alpha. So everything I said about every single one of these guns can be changed. Literally everything can be changed. So the spread can also be changed on this gun. But for now, if it's going to stay the same, if you tap at a certain fire rate, you can get the spread to be reduced really well and be very accurate with it. The other thing is it's got this huge metal shield in front of you. So it's actually not very good unless you're scoped in. So holding your right click to scope in and also 
it has a limited radius for your field of view. Meaning that the artillery, you could do a full 360 with it, but with the stationary minigun, you can't really turn a full 360 with it. And from what I've heard from the devs, they plan on maybe changing it, but I'm not too sure. Again, it's closed alpha, anything can change. But personally, I'd like to be able to do a full 360 with it, but I'm assuming maybe in some areas on the map, it would be too powerful if it were to be able to do a full 360. But I'm gonna leave it there, guys, and let you guys know you guys are awesome. Thank you for watching this entire video to the very end. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like down below and click that subscribe button because I've got more Battlefield 1 content coming out, giving more details and different aspects of gameplay. And I'll catch you guys later.